Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette drama. We're gonna start at Alyssa Ashley's review, move on to what happened on Twitter, cause you know I have every single receipt stacked, including Alyssa's exclusive statement. We'll talk about Norvina's response to the matter and what I think is really going on here. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. So for those of you who don't know, Alyssa Ashley is a beauty YouTuber slash influencer with just under 700,000 subscribers. Now, I don't think she was the first one to post a subculture review, but she definitely was the first one to call out the fallout. So it all started on Twitter when she posted consecutive tweets regarding her frustration with the palette after attempting to create a look for a video beginning with, just got done trying to film a look with this subculture palette and I genuinely don't know if I should post this video or not. I didn't even get to create a look because the palette was so chalky and terrible, so I genuinely feel bad that I couldn't even create a look with it. At this point she obviously made the decision to go ahead and post a video when she tweeted, I'm gonna post it but I'm really sorry in advance that I couldn't create a look, it was just that bad. Now before she posted the actual review she tweeted this video asking is this normal for an eyeshadow to be this powdery and to hit pan on your first time using it? The video clearly shows a tremendous amount of kickback and although she does dip into the product several times that wouldn't usually result in this much kickback to where you hit pan in a typical eyeshadow. So subsequent to posting this mini video to Twitter people started commenting calling her a liar, questioning the authenticity of her palette, saying she was salty because she wasn't on PR and had to purchase the palette herself, and criticized her for everything from the Morphe brush she used to her technique to her abilities as a makeup artist. One of her peers even went so far as to make a video mocking her. This video was made by Gina Shikita, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, who is also known as Jean's Makeup on YouTube. Believable! Wow. Urban Decay, I'm so never buying your shit. What? I can't- What? Bomb, I had so much faith in you, but like, I can't believe this. This is fu- Guys, expose. Isn't you? You were supposed to be the good one, modern renaissance. Jacobs, what do you think this is? Do you just think I'm not gonna notice? Do you just- Did you just think you could get away? I can make a new eyeshadow out of this eyeshadow. Look. New one. Now, to be fair, it is my understanding that Gina has since apologized to Alyssa for the video, but no shade slash shade. I hadn't even heard of her before this, but she does have almost half a million subs, and they do follow each other, so I'm not quite sure what she was trying to accomplish with this video, but I'm sure she feels like a fool now. Needless to say, the video has been deleted. Also contained in the thread where she posted the video showing the kickback of the shade Roxy were comments from some of her peers who experienced the same issue. Raw Beauty Christy agreed with Alyssa saying, yeah, I'm literally filming right this second and these are next level powdery. I don't know, what the fuck? To which Alyssa responded with, I'm glad I'm not the only one because I was sitting there filming feeling crazy. Christy responded with, same, I can't blend them for shit, I'm not kidding, it's like I've never done eyeshadow before. Alyssa agreed saying, same, I had to start over my look three times, I was like, what on earth? Mariah Leonard responded with, Cube just did this to me, upside down, smiley face emoji, literally. It seemed like a cream, so I stopped using my finger and swirled my brush in it, and 60% of it chunked out of the pan. Just a side note, all of these YouTubers are known for being upfront and honest in their reviews, so it's not like any of them have a history of being malicious or lying, and their fans love them for that. Then Norvina, who is the president of Anastasia Beverly Hills The Company, and also the daughter of Anastasia, responded to Alyssa's tweet, where she asked whether it was normal for an eyeshadow to be that powdery and to hit pan on first use by saying, that's not normal, ugh, sorry, that sucks. Customer service will replace it. Alyssa responded with, thank you, hoping I can give an updated review because I was devastated. All other ABH products I've used have never given me problems. Okay, so at this point, Alyssa goes ahead and uploads her video to YouTube, which caused a lot of controversy and uproar in the beauty community. Now, you've probably seen all these clips from her video. Now, so let's take this shade right here. It's called Roxy on the end called Roxy. I'm starting to think these, this shadow is really powdery because even me doing this, you guys, I'm literally doing this and it's creating a whole pile of eyeshadow right here. Like, it's literally just digging the eyeshadow out of the, oh my god. I, I can create like a whole another eyeshadow with this. It's literally digging it out. So if I were to dump it on my hand, here, let me dump it on my hand and show you guys. It's so powdery that it literally just dumped so much eyeshadow on my hand. Insert photo. That's how much powder is just picking up and kicking back as I use it. Oops, try to pick it up. As I use it, and you know while a lot of palettes do that, I've never seen it do it that much. 
So I think people failed to mention how many attempts she made to try to get this palette to work for her. In addition to talking about the extreme amount of kickback, she also spoke about how difficult the shades were to blend and layer and was unbelievably apologetic for simply not liking the palette, yet she still had people calling her a liar, doubting her abilities, and claiming she was exaggerating. Obviously feeling like she still had to defend herself, she commented under her video post on Twitter saying, If you watch my video, you can see I was equally excited about the palette as you guys and really tried to make it work. I started over my look three times because I really wanted it to be good and only became frustrated after the third attempt. Beauty blogger Temptalia, who is known in the industry for her unbiased and honest reviews, commented that she had experienced similar issues to Alyssa. If you want to read the whole thread, just pause the video and do so. Alyssa went on to say, I was literally sitting there questioning my own blending abilities at one point. I truly hope they fix the formula because I love ABH. Makeup Shayla then spoke out and said, I thought it was just me lol and that damn green eyeshadow was all over my face and my house. Here's Here's a pic of what Shayla's palette looked like and you can clearly see pan on the shade axis. Thomas Halbert tweeted, The ABH subculture doesn't even begin to match the same quality or performance as other ABH, nor are the formulas even remotely the same. Alyssa took to Twitter again to say, It's extremely unfortunate that some YouTubers will be afraid to address the quality of the palette in brackets unless they got lucky and got a good one because of their fear of upsetting the brand, but my loyalty isn't with these brands. It's with you guys, so I'd rather piss off a brand for making people aware that the product isn't good than to piss you guys off by lying and making you waste your money. More and more of her peers began to come forward to back her experience and as more people spoke up the curiosity about the palette grew but it's what happened next that really rubbed some the wrong way. Norvina released a statement regarding subculture on Twitter. She said subculture is super pigmented a little goes a long way. The product is drop tested by our QA before it's approved for production. It has to pass a drop test in order to ship and arrive to a customer safely through the mail. Now since our mats are pigmented they're soft pressed within specs that pass a drop test but not so soft that they would not pass that drop test. All production has a tiny percent of leeway for random issues slash defects because nothing is perfect. That's why we have customer service who is happy to replace or return a product. You can swirl a brush around over and over again to get to the bottom of the pan if you wanted to, but why would you? Regardless, the product is solid, stuff happens, and we have a good return policy when it does. It was Norvina's comment about swirling the brush around over and over that led people to believe that she was indirectly shading Alyssa and it was that comment that expedited a bad situation to a point of no return. Alyssa obviously read Norvina's statement and I guess responded to it saying, I, in quotes, swirled to get to the bottom of the pan, but at the end of the day, based on comments, I'm not the only one who got a palette. Swirling to the bottom of the pan or not, it was still chalky, still powdery and oxidized on my eyes and still didn't blend. So maybe get back to the lab and tell them they they messed up somewhere somehow at least that's what I would do if I were a huge brand I can swirl my brush in other eyeshadow and none of them would ever hit pan in 10 seconds but maybe this is a new shadow trend as far as I know Norvina did not respond directly to these tweets however she did respond to comments within Alyssa's thread on Alyssa's Twitter page to defend ABH customer service when someone commented that she had emailed customer service for a replacement palette due to the fallout of the shadows and customer service replied to her asking for pictures and apologizing for the palette arrived damaged. The customer responded that the palette was not damaged in transit and they then responded with pro tips on how to use the palette. The customer and Norvina are legit going back and forth in Alyssa's thread on her page, yet Norvina couldn't address slash apologize to Alyssa after indirectly shading her, so in my opinion that's a real slap in the face to respond to Alyssa's fans and not to her in her own house. Norvina also responded to someone asking whether it was normal to hit pan on first use, saying, no, nope, not at all, that would only happen if you just continuously swirl the brush around digging through it. I do this when I test products. Now, here's where things take a turn for the what the fuck. Manny MUA tweets, the fact that Jeffrey, Laura, and I have reviews of the subculture palette going up this week, I love it, get ready. Norvina responded to the untagged tweet with, drag me or is it block me? What do the kids say these days? I love you all regardless, hug emoji. Oh, okay, Norvina. Laura also replied on the thread saying, life goes on, the overall brand is still killing it. And then Jeffrey replies with, honestly, ABH is a consistent amazing brand. We all have these moments. Social media turns it into something it's not. Okay, first of all, I'm not even going to address the all of a sudden kumbaya Jeffrey because we've all seen him turn social media upside down when he's feeling frisky, but it was Norvina's response to Jeffrey that shocked the fuck out of me. She said, cannot wait for my Jeffrey drag. I'm excited. All jokes aside, thanks for being real with me always, babe. I mean, what the fuck is this? So I interpret this to mean, okay, beauty trifecta dream team, I'm giving you guys a pass to drag me and don't worry, no hard 
feelings, do your thing. It's just weird how she thanks Jeffrey for always being real, but Alyssa does the same thing and gets shaded. Okay, got it. Is it because all that really matters in the YouTube beauty community is what the trifecta dream team has to say, since they're on top, because that's certainly what it looks like. And by the way, I watched all three of the reviews, and yes, I feel like they were being honest, however, I thought they definitely walked on eggshells to soften the blow. Jeffrey, who is usually at a level 10, scaled it back to a 5 in my opinion. Manny, although I do believe he was honest, I also think he was holding back a little. Laura's review actually confused me because it kind of looked like a pro androgyny palette infomercial in my opinion. She said that she heard a lot of people comparing the subculture palette to the androgyny palette, which to this day I have not heard one person compare the two, but to me, it felt like, oh buy this one and not that one type thing. That was the impression I got anyway, and in fact it worked because there were people in the comments saying, oh I'll just get androgyny instead. So that was an interesting capitalization on the downfall of the subculture palette for Jeffrey and his company. I wouldn't be surprised if that was planned, although they did say they hadn't spoken before they filmed the reviews because they didn't want them to come across biased. Do I believe that? No. We wouldn't want another KKW contour stick situation where Jeffrey was one of the only influencers to give it a good review, because that was just embarrassing for his soul. Alyssa responded to Norvina's Jeffrey drag welcoming by saying, I wonder if ABH will indirectly discredit the makeup skills of these bigger YouTubers reviewing the palette since they agree that it's thumbs down emoji. I spoke with Alyssa and asked her for a statement and this is what she had to say on the issue. I think that Norvina and the ABH team should accept the fact that not every single product they launch will be perfect. I think that they've gotten so used to everyone showering them with, in brackets, super deserved respect and admiration for their products. So when they didn't receive that for this palette, they reacted in such a petty baby-like way. I went into my review extremely excited to try it out, and as the video goes on, my disappointment becomes more apparent, and I think that's the main thing people feel, disappointment. So I hope that in the future they handle situations like these better and treat all influencers equally, not shade smaller ones than, in brackets, for lack of a better way of phrasing it, be up the ass of the bigger ones. Now, if you thought the drama was over, oh no, honey, Alyssa Marie, who I presume is an artist for the corporate side of Anastasia Beverly Hills, did a demonstration of how to use the palette on Instagram stories because apparently it's not the palette that's the issue, it's the user. I don't have that Instagram story, but she posted this pic to Instagram and answered some questions regarding the palette in the comments of that post, which, by the way, have since been deleted. In response to a question presumably referring to batch issues as the issue with the palette, she wrote, Just to be clear, there are no batch issues with subculture. Subculture is different. Different than a lot of people, including me, are used to. Some people adapted quickly to this formula and made it work, while others didn't. The best way to know for sure whether you'll like the palette is to try it for yourself. I personally I personally love everything about this palette, I've used it for months now and I find new exciting ways to use it every day. If you're interested, you can check out the ABHIG stories where we have tutorials up every day this week using this palette. Now at this point somebody must have commented that they must have gotten lucky with their palette because Alyssa Marie commented, you're definitely not just lucky, you must have been blessed with both common sense and talent, lol, glad you're loving it. So this is someone who works for ABH implying that people who couldn't quote make it work, one, don't have common sense sense and two aren't talented. As if it couldn't get any worse and of course Norvina took to Twitter to defend Alyssa Marie's comments but still no response slash apology to Alyssa Ashley. Now if the issue truly is application as Norvina has said and this palette requires special attention such as tapping in two or three times due to high pigment and the softness of the shadows, where the fuck are their directions and why aren't they included with every palette? If I'm required to use a special brush, use a light hand, spin in circles and clap my hands three times while saying bippity bobbity boo, I I need to know that. Now, I don't know about you, but since this whole story broke, I've heard Norvina give several excuses slash explanations as to why the palette is the way it is. Remember when Alyssa posted that video to Twitter asking whether the kickback she was experiencing was normal and whether it was normal to hit pan on first use? Well, Norvina responded and said that it wasn't normal and that customer service would replace it. Then it turned into an application issue and she indicated that this palette required a light tap into the shadows because they are so pigmented. If this was the case, why didn't she say Say that to Alyssa at the time. If the shadows were meant to be soft yet pigmented, why did she fly out to her lab to fix the issue? What is there to fix if the palette truly was intended to be that way? Then she said it was a pressure inconsistency and that it was her first time using an automated press, so I don't understand. Is there an issue with the palette or not? 
Norvina's current explanation is that she wanted to do something for pro artists and that's why this palette may not be user friendly to beginners. These shadows were apparently intended to be pressed pigments which would require a more experienced user but how the fuck were we supposed to know that? Why was there no mention of this prior to the release and why is this only being addressed after the fallout, no pun intended, from the palette? And if any of the aforementioned excuses were true about the kickback, what is the reason for the oxidization and performance of the shades? I know some people like the palette and good for them but personally Personally, I think the whole it's supposed to be this way is a crock of shit. Let me give you the real tea about what I believe is going on here. Before I do so, I just want to say that this is my conspiracy. It has yet to be confirmed, but time will tell whether it was in fact just my conspiracy or did I tap into my psychic abilities and predict the future. So the rumor is that Anastasia Beverly Hills is in the process of selling their company. This happens all the time and in fact, I think it's probably the goal of most companies to eventually be bought by a huge conglomerate just like Too Faced with Estee Lauder. Over the past few months, you probably heard some influencers say that they've been removed from Anastasia's PR list. Some influencers are not receiving any Anastasia PR at all anymore, some are receiving bits and pieces of a collection, and some receive it all. This could be because they are in transition to sell. They started tapering off PR I believe when their blushes came out, so around May-ish, and if you remember not many influencers got the blushes in PR. You also may have noticed that they're pumping out products within very close time frames. We had the lip palette in January, new liquid lipstick shades in February, the Aurora palette and Nicole Guerrero high highlight palette collab in March, the blushes in May, the liquid glow in July, subculture in August, and the matte lipsticks are probably scheduled for September. That's a lot of products. My conspiracy is that they are skimping on quality and using cheaper ingredients due to the anticipated sale of the company. I've heard that they've switched over to using an automated press for their shadows, which may be so that they can mass produce and pump products out quicker, but their quality control definitely isn't what it used to be, and the quality of their products, in my opinion, isn't what it used to be either. Now, I purchased the Subculture palette and a brand new Modern Renaissance palette. When I opened the Modern Renaissance palette, the inside was coated with a powder residue from the remnants of the shadows. The shadows looked sloppily placed in their compartments, and in fact, one was even loose, which I showed on my live stream. So this is my brand new Modern Renaissance palette, and I don't know, maybe it's me, maybe my expectations are unreasonable, but it's just not really what I'd expect to see when opening an ABH palette. There seems to be a lot of excess shadow overhang along the edges of some of the pans, some of the corners of the shadows are chipped and it just looks kind of sloppy. I really don't remember the modern renaissance palette being this way. Obviously I wasn't the only one to experience these issues because I came across this person's pic on Alyssa's Twitter, also showing chipped shadows and a gap between where the pan and shadow should meet. I immediately looked to see if the ingredients were the same between the new and old modern renaissance palettes and they seem to be the same, but I wonder if it's the grade of ingredient that's changed, if that's even possible. Maybe they're using a different lab or maybe this is the result of automated pressing. I don't know. What I do know is somewhere along the line something has changed between the initial version of the modern renaissance palette to the current version. The other thing I noticed was that the current version of the modern renaissance palette has a lot of kickback as well. I know it's always had kickback, but this is more than I remember. I know a lot of people have said that it's because ABH now uses an ingredient called talc instead of mica, but that is not the case in the Modern Renaissance palette. Modern Renaissance still contains mica as its first ingredient. Subculture, on the other hand, does contain talc as its first ingredient. I've heard people say that talc as a first ingredient for subculture would play a major role in the kickback and performance of this palette, but I don't know a lot about ingredients, so I can't speak to the accuracy of that. And I'm not about to sit here and pretend that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I would recommend checking out Stephanie Nicole if you were looking for ingredient knowledge. But here's the thing, when I compare the two palettes, yes, Subculture had a ton of kickback, but so did Modern Renaissance. Maybe not as much, but there was a lot, so I was confused as to why the uproar was Subculture and not Modern Renaissance. And I guess the difference is that people are willing to forgive the kickback in Modern Renaissance because it performs well, whereas Subculture, you have the kickback, the oxidization issue, and overall performance issues. But then again, some people love their subculture palette and some people got modern renaissance palettes with very little kickback. Who the fuck knows? Was a subculture palette meant to be this way? I doubt it. If that were the case, why did Norvina fly out to their lab to see what could be done to resolve the issue? If that's how it should have been, stand behind the product and stick to one story. My opinion is, I mean my conspiracy, is that ABH is selling and they're now cutting corners allegedly. Regardless of that though, I don't think Norvina handled the situation professionally and I don't think she treated Alyssa fairly, especially in comparison to the Trifecta Dream Team. Let me know your thoughts on that.
Okay, guys, shit, this was a long one. I hope I brought the tea to the yard, and I hope you enjoyed this documentary. As usual, I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know how you felt about the subculture palette. Have you experienced similar issues to me regarding the modern renaissance palette? Have you noticed a decline in quality in ABH products? Also, let me know what you think of my conspiracy, or is it a conspiracy? Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again soon in my next video. Bye!